In today's video, I'm going to show you how to live stream using the Canon EOS R7. Now, a lot of the more recent Canon mirrorless cameras actually let you live stream directly from the camera using the USB-C port. Now, I haven't really recommended this because me personally, I don't like the image quality that using the USB utility through your computer gives you. I've done it a few times and it's really great if you're just going to use this camera as a webcam for maybe a meeting or whatever. But if you're actually going to properly live stream off of these Canon mirrorless cameras, I absolutely don't recommend using the USB-C method. And even right now here in August of 2022, they actually haven't come out with the USB utility for the EOS R7, which is fine. Also, if you like this content and want to see more content like this, make sure to boop that like button and hit the subscribe and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest content from the channel. Today I'm going to show you the best way to live stream from the EOS R7 and pretty much any Canon mirrorless camera and it's using this HDMI capture device that looks like this little USB dongle. So I use this Camlink USB HDMI capture card and it works really well and it pretty much works with any computer. I actually use it with my M1 MacBook Air, reason being is just because this thing is so portable I could take it with me and live stream on the go, I could use my phone, tether, pretty much live stream from anywhere but again it can be used from any computer I use it with my iMac behind me it is the best image quality for the money you can get the original version of the cam link which I'm actually using right here I've never upgraded to the 4k one for around hundred dollars and then the 4k version is a little bit more however most live streams aren't in 4k pretty much if you're live streaming to YouTube you're live streaming to Facebook you are at 720p or YouTube will allow you to actually go to 1080p no consumer based live stream streaming platform will let you live stream 4k although it's great to have it so the HD version of the cam link is fine but again for the $20 or so more for the 4k one you may want to have the ability to have 4k so besides this cam link the other things you're going to need is obviously a computer to do the live streaming from and then you're going to need an HDMI cord that does micro HDMI to regular HDMI in order to hook your camera up to this capture device as far as hardware that's really all you need. You need the HDMI capture card, you need the HDMI cord, and you need a computer to live stream from. Now, there are tons of third-party, much cheaper capture cards than the Elgato. I can tell you from experience of having around 10 of the different cheaper HDMI capture cards in addition to the cam link, the color accuracy and just colors in general that you get off of the cheaper ones are nowhere near as good as the cam link. However, you can pick up really cheap HDMI capture cards for like $10, $20. However, again, if you're gonna do this professionally, totally recommend using the cam link over those because it's cheap enough. We do a lot of our interviews for Jazz's Magazine using the cam link. We've also been using the Canon EOS R7 exclusively for those interviews. I was using the R6 for a while, and then of course I was using my Blackmagic cameras for many years. However, the beauty of using the R7 and even the R6, pretty much any of the modern Canon cameras, is the fact that you have autofocus. I mean, mid-interview I can go do this and come back and I'm still in focus. Whereas on the Black Magics, of course, because there is no autofocus on them, if you start moving around a lot and you're shooting super wide open at f1.8, well then you're not gonna stay in focus on those. So that's why using the R7 as a live stream camera is a really great option just because of how great the autofocus is, how great the colors are in the camera. Now, as far as recommendations for color profiles, this is the one time where I actually recommend not shooting in C-Log3 if you're gonna be live streaming from this camera, just because you don't really wanna output a log image to your live stream. So what I typically do is just go to the standard color profile, and I use that color profile for any of the live streams that I do. The colors are decent, and again, we're not putting out a 4K image anyways to that live stream. All my live streams are pretty much going to YouTube and occasionally Facebook, so they look really great even with the standard color profile, you just have to make sure your exposure is on point. Now when it comes to what software I use to live stream, that's a little bit different from the R7 in general because there are so many different programs. A big free one is OBS, which you can download for free for Mac and PC. 
It's a little bit harder to use because there's a lot of things that you kind of have to learn with OBS, but again, it is free. But what we use here at Reach Films for all of our clients is we actually use StreamYard. And the reason we use it is you're able to control and broadcast just as if you were using a professional broadcasting system, but you're able to do it all from the power of your computer. Or if you want to use a tablet, you can actually use an iPad as well to control the stream. And you can bring people in, you can interview two people at once, you can interview four people at once, six people at once. You can also select certain people that you want to full screen or you could bring up tabs on your computer, play videos, images. StreamYard is pretty much the best and easiest option for live streaming right now. I think the only difference between StreamYard and OBS as far as cost is that StreamYard is a monthly subscription, whereas OBS and a lot of the other live stream software are free or relatively cheap a one-time payment. But another bonus to using StreamYard is you don't have to have a powerful computer because all of the live stream is really handled on the StreamYard end of the software. Whereas on OBS or any of the other software, you need a really good computer to do it. And I think you could do it on an M1 MacBook Air like I have here. However, this is an M1 MacBook Air. It's not the most powerful computer. So being able to use a software like StreamYard and have that software just handle everything virtually and not have to worry about using a powerful computer or even use a tablet is really great. So I'll have a link to everything I discussed in the description below. But overall, live streaming with the R7 is a really simple process. I really enjoy using it, especially with how great the autofocus is and how great the audio preamps are in this camera. For instance, a lot of the live streams I do, I have this microphone hooked up directly into the R7 and with StreamYard, it actually does a lot of the audio equalization for you and if you're not using StreamYard, you're gonna have to do a little bit of the audio equalization yourself. The last thing I'd recommend is if you're gonna do a live stream, make sure you're hooking the camera up to a USB-C power source. For the most part, for most of my live streams, even when they go over an hour, the internal battery does last, but it's really more for you don't have to worry about charging that battery or whatever. You just know that you have power to last your entire live stream. So I do recommend using a USB-C cord. Also, I would use a right angle USB-C cord Cord so it doesn't get in the way of your monitor if you are looking at your monitor for instance if you're doing the live stream for yourself you may want to look at your monitor and see your exposure now where that may not matter is if you're using a program like StreamYard and you're controlling the stream yourself then you're probably going to see your camera feed on your computer where you may not need the feed from the camera itself as you're not recording from the camera but if you have any questions on how to live stream with the Canon R7, I tried to make this as quick and simple as possible. Please ask in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Till next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.